who made a difference for Taiwan this year? Join us as we hear from the movers and shakers that have impacted Taiwan. From diplomats to athletes to philanthropists, you'll be moved at how these people inspired Taiwan. Welcome to our People of the Year 2021 show. Today, we want to thank people who've made a big difference for Taiwan this year. First, we want to thank the amazing country of Lithuania, especially its leaders, as they stood up for Taiwan in a big way this year by welcoming a Taiwanese representative office to its capital despite China's diplomatic and economic sanctions. Lithuanian Foreign Minister Gabrielis Landsbergis led the way in showing the world how to resist China and base foreign policy on values. We also want to thank those on the front line of standing up for Taiwan. Lithuanian Member of Parliament Dovili Sakliani started a hashtag Stand Up for Taiwan and hashtag Stand Up for Lithuania campaign. When she was in Taiwan this month, she told me why they welcomed a Taiwanese representative office to their capital. Now, Taipei is your capital, but the representative office does not represent only your capital, it represents Taiwan. And yes, legally, we are binded by the agreement that we have signed just as we regained our independence, and it includes the mention of one China policy. So we believe that you are the ones to make your decisions regarding your relations with China. However, there is an embassy of People's Republic of China in Lithuania and here is representative office of Taiwanese people. So why call it in the name of the capital? Why not call it of the Taiwanese people? It does not violate any legal agreements. So I think that's pretty simple. Now Lithuania is a small country of less than 3 million people, but it is bold and visionary. Earlier this year, the head of the Lithuanian Parliamentary Group for Relations with Taiwan, Matas Maldekis, told me about his vision for our bilateral ties. Taiwanese have been buying a lot of Lithuanian goods, over 90 million US dollars. I recently went to a Lithuanian chocolate <laughs> store. That's we nice. Ruta chocolate is delicious. My favorite is the coffee bean chocolate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, Very nice. yeah, what is, what is your hope for uh, trade relations um, with Taiwan? Mm -hmm. I know you're coming here in December. What would you like to achieve? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is my vision? What is my mission? Mm -hmm. To be an example. To be an example for, because what we are doing here, it's not only about uh, Taiwan and Lithuania. What we are doing here is about Taiwan and European Union. My dream is to show that, you know, uh, 23 million uh, highly educated, uh, rich country who is very high on the technologies and who is democracy, it's much better to deal than the country who is authoritarian and pressing you and dealing with that, you don't have sovereignty. You don't have rule of law. And if you have a business there that, and you, if you're doing something that they don't like, you'll be dead in the water. You'll have big problems. So that means you are losing your sovereignty. We don't want that. We want to show that if we can make a good example of relationship economically between Lithuania and Taiwan, uh, believe me, uh, other countries will follow. We want to recognize the European Parliament and its members, but most of all, we'd like to thank Swedish MEP Charlie Vamers for authoring the EU-Taiwan report which is the parliament's first resolution on Taiwan. He told us why the EU is choosing to strengthen ties with Taiwan. Right now we see uh, a rise of Chinese belligerence, disinformation and hostility against the West. And many of the like-minded democratic partners around the world, such as the EU, the US, Japan, South Korea, India, and Australia, have come to realize the urgent need to cooperate together in confronting the increasingly overt Chinese bullying. Um, and given Taiwan's own difficult relationship with ma mainland China, 
including uh, continuous uh, Chinese belligerence against the island. Taiwan can serve as a very important example of how to withstand Chinese pressure, belligerence, and disinformation campaigns in both uh, the Chinese-speaking uh, world as well as uh, in the English-speaking world, while standing strong on, on values such as freedom, democracy, and, and human dignity. And uh, also, um, Taiwan has a very advanced, robust economy. It's an economy that holds a very strong position in the world economy, and it encapsulates the prototype for modernization, digitalization, and economic growth. I mean, not to forget that uh, Taiwan has become a major player in the production of, of uh, semiconductors, uh, leading edge chips. So in its very own right, uh, Taiwan is uh, a, an important economic partner for the European Union. Bamers isn't the only MEP we want to thank. There's also Czech MEP Marketa Gregorva, who initiated the European Parliament's first official visit to Taiwan. German MEP Reinhard Budakofer for his support and being a longtime friend of Taiwan. And Slovakian MEP Ivan Stefanich, who is also a good friend of Taiwan. All of these MEPs gave us their take on why EU-Taiwan relations are growing stronger. Stefanich explained to us why EU-Taiwan ties are closer than ever. Never ever before was in the European Parliament such a good atmosphere, a pro-Taiwanese atmosphere. And uh, the evidence is that recently also we adopted a very favorable uh, pro-Taiwanese uh, resolution asking European Commission to start bilateral investment agreement. I think it's uh, really time to start uh, also uh, uh, this uh, negotiation because there is a lot of potential and democracies should cooperate. We should support Taiwan and not China. We also need to thank Taiwan's leading diplomats, Foreign Minister Joseph Wu and Representative to the United States, Xiaobi Kim. Foreign Minister Joseph Wu made a groundbreaking trip to Slovakia, the Czech Republic, and Brussels this year. When China suddenly banned the import of Taiwanese pineapples, he also spearheaded the very successful hashtag Freedom Pineapple campaign. Xiaobi Kim is Taiwan's first female representative to the U.S. and attended Biden's inauguration and the Summit for Democracy on Taiwan's behalf. She has been working hard to build ties with the U.S. and other allies. This year, Xiao told me about the success of Taiwan's soft power abroad. I, I think Taiwan is one of the most open, uh, diverse, and uh, innovative, uh, creative societies uh, in in um, East Asia. And um, our, our people are really taking advantage of that open uh, freedom of speech, that space for innovation and being creative uh, about um, having our voice heard uh, in the international community and uh, having Taiwan's presence um, felt in a positive and constructive way. We do want to utilize the many um, characteristics of our culture and our society uh, in the process of uh, securing greater support, whether it involves um, food, um, <laughs> culture, uh, pineapples, uh, music, <laughs> or sports. You know, last year we were, um, there, there were a few months where Taiwan was the only country in the world playing uh, baseball during the, the pandemic. And, you know, we, we, we do want to, to showcase the diversity, the um, openness of our society and, and the, the many aspects of our culture and creativity as we express to the world our desire uh, to be that force for good. Earlier this year, Taiwan sent 68 athletes to compete in 18 sports at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. There, Team Taiwan put on its best Olympic performance yet, winning 12 medals, 6 bronze, 4 silver, and 2 gold. Head of Sports Science of Taiwan's Olympic team, Professor Xiang Ziyuan, told us why Taiwan performed so well this time around. I think the major re reason is that uh, government support many facilities for the training center. And also after 2017, the Taipei World University Games, this society in Taiwan recognized the value of sports. So 
the, all the athletes and the coaches, they are willing to train and uh, train harder than ever. So that's why uh, the uh, performance in this year, to Tokyo Olympic, is much better than previous games. So I did see some footage of how AI is helping the female weightlifters. How much of an edge do you think that technology plays in competition? We use the AI to try to record the movement of the weightlifter. Also, we can track their uh, trajectory of the barbell, so we know their movement is stable or not. So uh, during a training session, we can record every lift the athlete performs. Well, you know, we're so proud of all the athletes, and we've won in so many new sports. There's six new sports that we medaled in. Why do you think Taiwan was able to branch out and excel in all these new sports? We have judo and, and golf and, you know, all, all these different sports. Those sports are not new sports in Taiwan. Uh, you know, in uh, compared with the Western country, uh, the Asian SD are good at the, the sport with the uh, weight class and also ah. with the fine motor skill. So this kind of sport are very suitable for the Taiwanese SD. For example, the weightlifting and taekwondo uh, are weight class sports. And other sports like uh, karate, judo, and uh, boxing are also similar. The other one is the sports with fine motor skill, like uh, archery or shooting. And for badminton and table tennis and the golf are similar to this kind of sports. So these kind of sports are very good for Taiwanese to develop. Uh, I, I think the only new sports in Olympic uh, is the gymnastic this time. Gymnastic uh, perform very well. Uh, in this Olympic. Uh, the reason is that there's a movie called Jump Boys. Right. In, I think it's in 2005. Uh, since that movie, uh, many young students try to uh, practice gymnastics. And so we can recruit many good uh, athletes and coaches to join us the gymnastic team. When people think of the billionaire Terry Guo, most people think of him as the man who founded Foxconn, the company that makes the world's iPhones and other popular devices. But I think of him as the one who enabled me to get fully vaccinated this year. When Taiwan was at the height of its outbreak this year and facing a major vaccine shortage, Terry Guo resolved to persuade the government to let him buy and donate to the public 5 million doses of the BioNTech Pfizer vaccine straight from Germany that paved the way for the donation of 10 million doses from TSMC and Foguangsan, giving Taiwan a total of 15 million doses of a very reputable vaccine. Thank you, Mr. Guo, for helping Taiwan get vaccinated this year. In May, Taiwan experienced a domestic COVID-19 outbreak after a series of super spreader events. Health authorities immediately placed Taiwan on a level 3 pandemic alert. It was basically a soft lockdown. We never had to go into a full lockdown because, as soon as crunch time hit, the Taiwanese people did their part to make sure the outbreak didn't get any worse. What did they do? Nothing. They stayed at home and kept the streets empty. That prevented COVID-19 from spreading. There are pictures online of once busy streets looking absolutely desolate. Though it resembled a movie about the end of the world, back then it was an immense comfort. Because we could see that people were doing what they could to help fight the outbreak. To the people of Taiwan, thank you. Thank you for showing restraint, patience, and compassion during Taiwan's time of need. Your willingness to put your life on hold may have saved a life. Because of you, Taiwan does not have to coexist with COVID like many other places have been forced to. No matter what the world has to say about Taiwan, you've proven that we can come together and achieve things nobody else can. If COVID-19 has taught us anything, it's that normalcy isn't normal anymore. We've learned the value of normal, and because of you, we get to cherish what we once took for granted. Thank you.
Thank you for joining us for this look at Taiwan's 2021 People of the Year. Now, of course, this was just Natalie and I's opinions, so let us know who would you nominate for a Person of the Year in Taiwan for 2021? Tell us in the comments below. For Taiwan Insider, I'm Leslie Liao. I'm Natalie So, and you know we'd love to hear from you. And do follow us, subscribe, uh, like. Um, we hope that you follow us on social media. Yeah, and uh, don't forget to tweet at us. Our handle is Taiwan Insider. Anyway, guys, See you next year. Have a good end of 2021. Bye.